All right, welcome back to my Learning to Drift series. Um, I put in probably another hour or two on this toge run. Uh, trying out a different car this time, an E36 uh, BMW. It's a gravy garage car, and I'm trying out semi-slicks instead of the street tires. But other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. Um, one thing I realized, actually, is that um, last video actually did something I, I said I wouldn't do, which is I essentially cherry-picked a run, right? I, you know, I did a couple runs, and most of them I'm kind of messing up in between, and then resetting back to the beginning. And I kind of took the run that I actually made it from beginning to end. Um, and I realized it's not really indicative of my typical runs here. So for this video, I just did three or four runs in a row. And if I mess up, I reset, I keep it in. So, uh, you know, it's a good kind of baseline of how I'm doing at this point. Um, I think it's important to see that so I can, one, see progress that I'm making, you know, any improvements I'm making. Um, and then on top of that, I think... A lot of people, when they do these sorts of learning to drift videos, you know, it's they, they wind up cherry picking their best runs, or maybe they take a couple clips from each corner that went really well. And I feel like it gives people a false impression of how quickly people are learning. And I think it actually discourages others from playing or trying to learn how to drift because they think, wow, this guy's been drifting, you know, for four hours total time, and all of a sudden, He's getting these perfect drifts and never spinning out, and I just don't think that's actually true. You know, I'm sure there are some people who are just naturally good at it, or have done it a ton of in real life of drifting, or maybe they've done a lot of regular racing, so they just have really good car control. But I bet the typical person learning is probably closer to what I'm dealing with, right? So in these runs, you know, I put in over 50 hours, you know, over 60 hours at this point of drifting in the Seto Corsa. Um, and I am not just pulling off perfect runs, not even close, right? And I think, um, I feel like this is a more realistic representation of what to expect at this point. Um, and so, yeah, then, you know, don't get discouraged if, you know, you've put in as much time as I have, maybe a little less, and you're like, oh, wow, I'm not getting perfect runs every time, you know, I must suck at this. Um, and I don't think that's true. I think this is, the reality is it takes a while to get good. And a lot of the things you're seeing on YouTube are people just picking their perfect runs, you know, doing it over and over and finally getting one perfect run and putting that up. Or even worse, just, you know, I, I did, I linked three good corners. So I'm just going to save that in one clip and then I'm going to transition over to another clip where I got another good two corners in a row, right? And that's much easier to do than just kind of being flawless in all your runs. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping this gives people a better perspective of kind of what to expect. And for me, I just want to be able to see that there has been improvement, right? So there are times where I get frustrated or I feel like, um, oh, I kind of punch a time off when I still suck at this. Um, and to be honest, even with this run, I'm kind of feeling that way. But even now, when I look back on some of the previous runs I've done on this course, I can definitely see some bits of improvement. Um, so yeah, I think that has all been pretty encouraging. So yeah, if you guys are interested, you know, keep watching. There's a couple more runs up this hill. None of them perfect at all, not even close. But um, I think it's pretty, represent pretty representative of uh, the progress I'm making so far.